President Obama made it clear he may well take his confrontation with Russian President Vladimir Putin to the next level and ship arms to Ukraine to fight pro-Moscow separatists. What I've asked my team to do is to look at all options. What other means can we put in place uh, to change Mr. Putin's calculus? Uh, and the possibility of lethal defensive weapons is one of those options that's being examined. But I have not made a decision about that yet. But German Chancellor Angela Merkel wants the White House to wait, at least until Wednesday, when she is expected to sit down with Putin to hammer out a peace deal. I've always said I don't see a military solution to this conflict, but we have to put all our efforts in bringing about a diplomatic solution. With Russia already accused of violating past agreements and sanctions having little effect on Putin, the Obama administration is dropping plenty of hints. Too many times President Putin has promised peace and delivered tanks, troops, and weapons. So we will continue to provide Ukraine with security assistance, not to encourage war, but to allow Ukraine to defend itself. Even the president's nominee for defense secretary is open to more weapons. I very much incline in that direction, um, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, because I think we need to support the Ukrainians in defending themselves. A move to arm Ukraine could further strain relations with Germany. After those disclosures, the U.S. spied on Merkel's phone calls. But in a sign of the internal debate within his own administration, the president downplayed the impact of helping Ukraine defend themselves. I think both Angela and I have emphasized that uh, the prospect for a military solution to this problem uh, has always been low. Still, if Putin balks at another deal, Merkel conceded the world may be running out of diplomatic options. If we give up this principle of territorial integrity of um, countries, then we will not be able to maintain the peaceful order of Europe that we've been able to achieve. This is the town of Kramatorsk, deep in government-held territory, just after midday. The lady filming this is looking east, towards Russia. Towards a front line that was some 50, 60 miles away. Not now. What? 25 minutes ago, the main headquarters of our anti-terrorist operation in Kramatorsk took a strike from a tornado rocket. A second strike hit a residential area of Kramatorsk. Officially, we're told that at least seven civilians and four soldiers were killed. Not just for that reason was this a major and significant attack. It's what it also says about Kiev because it reinforces the impression that the government is on the back foot and in need of some desperate help. But the UK isn't, at the moment, planning on arming the Ukrainian military, but the Foreign Secretary, speaking in London, hasn't completely ruled it out. Different members of the Alliance take nuanced positions on this question and are entitled to do so. However, we share a clear understanding that while there is no military solution to this conflict, we could not allow the Ukrainian armed forces to collapse. Tomorrow, the leaders of Russia, Ukraine, Germany and France, the so-called Normandy group, will meet in the Belarusian capital, Minsk, to talk about a peace deal. They will discuss a demilitarized zone and the withdrawal of heavy weapons from the area. On the eve of the summit, though, the attack on Kramatorsk has made Kiev's position look weak.